Hey, everybody. Welcome to another Fireside Chat. Chris might remember we used to have an actual fire in our Fireside Chats, but uh, we, we've moved away from that. Um, My anyways, house is a little cold. I'm happy to go turn a fire on. Yeah, yeah <laughs> we should at least get a, an outdoor fireplace going. Anyways, I'm Chris Reuter, head of growth at Prefect. We've got some people with us. You guys want to go around and, and uh, introduce yourselves? Yeah, I guess since I just spoke, I'm Chris. I'm the CTO at Prefect. I'm uh, Matthijs. I'm a senior software engineer on the data products team. Uh, at Pocket. <laughs> at Pocket. <laughs> uh, I'm Jesh. Uh, I'm also at Pocket, and I uh, manage the data products team. Awesome. Well, again, thank you guys for, for joining us today. Uh, so Pocket, I guess, Jesh, would you mind just giving a little bit of overview for those who don't know? Uh, I personally am a user. What is Pocket? Yeah, Pocket's a lot of things to a lot of different people. Um, Pocket is first and foremost a subsidiary. Actually, I think it is just part of Mozilla at this point. It used to be a, a separate company, but it was acquired and then it was rolled into the Mozilla business as a whole. Um, there are two major parts of Pocket. One is there's a kind of native app experience where you have iOS, Android um, apps, but also browser extensions across many uh, clients. And then also we drive recommendations across a lot of different services um, one place that a lot of people might be familiar with us is seeing content recommendations on Firefox, desktop, Android, iOS, new tab. Um, so across many different Firefox services, we display and promote content. That's awesome. Very cool. Um, and you have posted a, a blog. I'll, I'll put a little a link to it in a little bit, but a really cool blog kind of laying out your stack and, and how you use Prefect. Um, if you wouldn't mind, uh, Josh, if you just give us a little bit of an overview, and then we can maybe dive into how you use Prefect and, and you know, open. Like we can talk about open source in general, which I think we're planning to talk about. But you know, what does your stack look like? What what tools do you use? And, and then internally within Pocket, what does that what does that achieve? If you, you know, you're giving recommendations to people, you're using Pocket maybe to save things. Um, you know, what are you achieving there with that data stack that you've built? And and as a former machine learning uh, engineer, I'd love to hear anything you can share about the algorithm itself. <laughs> uh, actually, you know, I'm going to let Matthias take the lead on kicking us off. He actually did most of the implementation work and was your primary advocate in doing this work. So very nice. Let's hear it. Talk about the details. Yeah, sure. Um, so um, before we uh, we start using Prefect, we're in a situation where we were using both Airflow and in-house tools to do. Uh, to build data pipelines. Um, and the pain points there were that Airflow was just really hard to ramp up on for new engineers. In practice, like one person was pretty familiar with with Airflow and other people just like, you know, kind of like had a, had a painful experience. Um, and uh, the in-house tools that we built suffered from not being very observable. So we were looking for like one tool where we could go to that um, would be a great experience for, for all our data uh, engineering needs. Um, and I think the, the one thing that like immediately stood out when we start using Prefect was how different uh, the UI is from, from Airflow. Uh, that, that it wasn't like actually something we were actively looking for, but the, the difference was just uh, uh, startling between Airflow and Prefect. Um, like when we went to Airflow, uh, it was actually kind of like scary to push on certain buttons sometimes because it was very unclear what they did. And uh, Prefect is very intuitive to use, I think. Um, but um, yeah, uh, so we, we've we started using Prefect for, for various uh, use cases right now. Um, one is to load up some data in our uh, email, um, like uh, email send platform called Braze. Um, and we've also started using Prefect to ingest data into our uh, feature store, um, where we gather the features we use to train machine learning models, um, as well as uh, uh, access those in real time in our application. And are those uh, pipelines, batch pipelines that run on the schedule? Do you do something event-based where you just trigger them, you know, or some combination maybe? At the moment, everything is batched, but we do have use cases uh, coming up that are real-time. 
and uh, we're hoping to integrate those in, in Prefect as well, because we would would love not to have to support multiple uh, data orchestration uh, frameworks. Very cool. And and you you said it looks like you're using this uh, AWS SageMaker for your feature store. Is that where you're you're training your models in, in SageMaker as well? Um, we've exper experimented with SageMaker a little bit, but actually the solution we've used and which we kind of like is to use uh, Metaflow, which is a Netflix-based framework uh, to train ML models. Makes it really easy to go from uh, training a model on your laptop to running that on a uh, like a big machine in the cloud. And um, our plan is to uh, to integrate that into Prefect and trigger those Metaflow jobs using Prefect. Very cool. I think That's we've awesome. heard. Yeah, we, you and I, Chris, we talked about that. Other other customers are doing that, or other users are doing that as well. I think uh, that's like a pattern that we're seeing. We had a uh, fun little piece of history here. Whenever Metaflow first launched and you know open sourced everything, right? They have a lot of like, tasks. They have something that looks like task mapping, and everyone was like, "Whoa, wait, wait, what is this? What is this?" And hilariously enough, the Metaflow team also had the same thing, where people started asking them about Prefect, and so we started talking a lot and like I got invited to this kind of internal Netflix chat where we were all just like talking about how confused everyone else was, but like we felt very in line and knew what we were doing. It just so happens that we had landed on the same kind of design and name principles. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think your pattern to, you know, is the one that people seem to be gravitating towards now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just to kind of add to what you're saying, it was, Metaflow did have a lot of similar constructs to the point that even some of our MLEs were doing work in Metaflow, which really belonged much better in Prefect. Right. We're now in the process of moving that stuff over to Prefect. <laughs> yep, that that sounds like a common story. <laughs> and, and not to take us too far off of, you know, Matthias, if you have more to share, but you mentioned uh, just MLEs. And I think a, a lot of people watching this or who will watch the, the recording are probably in the same shoes as you where they're uh, they're working on building a data platform. So, uh, Matthias uh, or or Jesh, what what type of of user base are you supporting internally? And you know how how technical are they? And how how are you start how uh, familiar are they with orchestration concepts? That's a really good question. Do you yeah, that? we're we're a very small team at Pocket. I think Pocket is about seventy five people in total, including uh, you know everyone. Um, our data products team itself is only, I believe, uh, we're at five now. Um, so, so the people that are actually like in, actively working with Prefect or Metaflow is really small. Um, we are, we are actually like hiring. Uh, so, if you're looking uh, to uh, to join, we have lots of roles open across Pocket, including in our team. So, uh, if you're looking for some something interesting, go to getpocket.com slash Jobs. I think we can probably also post uh, a link in the description. Um, but um, so, so the, us the users that, are, that we are actively supporting with, like, that are like working in our data pipelines, it's really small. But we are, we have like users in the sense that there's an editorial team that relies on our machine learning models to um, to get interesting stories that they can review and decide whether they want to post that or not. So we have both like users that use our ML models that are internal as well as um, external users um, that use our, that discover stories through our recommendation models. That's yeah, very cool. But also to add to your question a little bit, one thing I'll add is, you know, right now, given that we're a small team, one of the things that suit us well with Prefect is the level of support you have and the clarity in the kind of just DSLs and structure of it. It's that made it so that everybody on our team is at least able to contribute some to some degree to Prefect, right? Everybody can kind of unblock themselves and move forward. And that was um, something that we had struggled with with our previous iterations. So it's something we were looking for in the next solution. I, I re really appreciate that. I think um, the natural next step might be, you know, open source, you have shared, you guys have an awesome blog that we posted here. I think you've got a, a repo as well. Um, or maybe just like a GitHub organization where you're kind of sharing code in general. So your uh, your take to open source, it, it seems like you're, I mean, I know Matthias, you have contributed to, to Prefect. Um, do you contribute to a variety of different open source tools and 
how do you think about open source as a strategy um, for the tools that you're choosing? Do you prefer open source tools? Uh, yeah, for sure. Um, Mozilla, uh, of, of course, is like a strong proponent of open source software, as I know that Prefect is as well. Um, and I, I think, you know, I think Prefect, Prefect probably, you know, couldn't be where you are today without uh, having like, having to walk that road of open source. Um, it gives me like, uh, I think there are so many aspects. It gives me more confidence about like the security as well, because you are being transparent about about your software, how it works, um, and it would also give me like more confidence that if if we would need to make any changes, that we actually could, that we aren't blocked by um, by another team, for example, to create new tasks. Right. Yeah, I think this is something I think about a lot. Not just, I mean, not just for prefect, but just kind of generally, I, I will definitely admit on the spectrum of open source people, I'm, I'm not at the, like the extreme of it, but I'm also very pro open source and I've been trying to like find what is the thing that makes me not the extreme. And I think for me, a lot of open source is about tools that you need debuggability insight into, or it can be extended just by their very nature. So like Datadog, I'll admit, I really don't care if Datadog's agent is open source or not. It doesn't do anything for me. I don't need, you know, I just don't need to extend the agent as long as I can extend the metrics I send. So there's an open source SDK to publish those, that's important. And then I can debug that SDK, but the agent itself is just kind of scooping and sending things and I will just trust that they're doing their job. Um, mm -hmm. And so, I think that's kind of where I've landed. And then for tools that are used for scientific purposes, I think open source is really important also, right? Because of reproducibility, portability, uh, et cetera. And so I really like, for, I think a lot about like the Pangeo uh, Forge team and a lot of what they're doing is just trying to make this like really amazing open source, not only code, but infrastructure as well. It's like all very reproducible for climate science and things like that. Yeah, what I'd even add to that is like just to push, like I both agree with you, but also to expand it. I think, you know, being in what we call like data products or machine learning or kind of just data pipeline work in general, it's like a very quickly evolving space and it's changing a lot. I don't know, like weekly, it feels like there's a new library or a new strategy or, or a new thing to be integrated in a new way or a new way to think about a problem. And like being leveraging open source in that world is like, we know that we won't be blocked to agree with what Matthias was saying is that like, hey, we have a new thing. We don't got to wait for a vendor to deploy or unblock us to use this cool new tool that we want to do for vector storage or whatever it was. We just build the adapter ourselves and that keeps us moving forward. So like being in a very uh, dynamic product space helps a lot. Yeah, and makes a ton of sense. And, and just even I mean, this sounds silly, but I think just even having the issue board, I mean, don't get me wrong, you can create a discourse for anything under the sun if you want, but something about GitHub being the centralized place of discussion is just so helpful. Mm -hmm. Now, let me bring us maybe to an opposite viewpoint or, or maybe a, a, a counter viewpoint. And let's talk about security and open source. Uh, I think that, I know. I, I have yeah. a story. Can I just tell us? Yeah. It's not going to further the conversation, but I think it's just a fun story that I love to tell people. Let's hit so, it. I am a big proponent of Easter eggs in software. I just think they're fun. And so there are a few Easter eggs, especially in Prefect 1.0. Um, we haven't quite been able to justify the bandwidth to do some in 2.0. But so one of them, I won't tell you what it is, but it's in our open source code base. And because of that, I tried to make it just, just a little cryptic, right? I didn't want you to be able to quite tell what it was doing. And someone was clearly doing a security review of Prefect and found this file and they're like, what is this? This is really hard to understand. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, it's hard to understand, but I was like, just run it. You'll see what it does. And you can re then reread it and realize what it's doing. It's, it's safe code. And I got into this like little argument on this one commit. And he's like, you should remove this. This like reduces my confidence. And I was like, look, I'm sorry. It is perfectly secure code and I'm definitely not removing it. And it is to this day un untouched. And I stand stand by that it is very secure <laughs> and only fun. 
I, I, I like I like working for a company like that. By the way, I think <laughs> taking taking a principled stand on fun, I think, <laughs> I think, it, I think it's important. Um, but so you know, open source. Jesse talked about like you know, it's a cool new tool. I think there's a there's a perception from many people, even in our community, but out, you know, people who are not as comfortable with open source, that they could potentially be um, you know, insecure. How do you think about that? When, like, either Matthias or, or Jess, when you're evaluating new tools, um, is that something that really concerns you? And how do you go about evaluating new tools for security? Yeah, <clears throat> I think there's a lot of lenses in which you look through security. Um, and one lens that we care a lot about is user privacy. And like you know, security as, as far as the other lens, like exploits or having systems compromised, are one of our primary concerns. Always is user data being compromised in those scenarios. So, um, being a company that's you know Mozilla, we care a lot about user privacy and how we you know uh, ensuring that our users can trust uh, us with their content and their and their their data. So. It's very early in the vendor uh, evaluation process or any tool evaluation process, we're talking about security. Um, one thing that led us to Prefect, of course, right off the bat was that um, versus Airflow and other tools is that we can have the runners running in our own infrastructure and we don't have to have the data passing through uh, a third party cloud or a stack or whatever else where we don't know, we have less control over what happens. Um, and so for us, Prefect was a great solution, and it made it very easy to sell internally to talk about how this was a move forward. Now, you have to think about all of the extra things around security, like, am I logging the right things? Am I not, you know, am I obfuscating things that's sensitive and too sensitive to a third party? And all these other checkboxes that you gotta do with any system. And that does increase risk and in attack surfaces, and we have to be really cognizant of that. But we felt like this was a really good compromise where we get a tool quickly, responds to our needs, allows us to improve our patterns and practices where we don't have to do one-offs, which we felt gave us more confidence, more reliability that we were leveraging better patterns with the one compromise that we are adding a vendor. And so we need to be aware that there's, you know, there's that compromise there. Absolutely. And I think another viewpoint on open source is that, you know, while uh, you may potentially using new tools, you're, you've got a lot more surface area for like a potential breach. Also, you've just got more eyes and people invested in the security of a product when, when it's open source, which I think is a, is a value and of communities. I think that's really important, Reuter. I mean, all of us on this call are gonna nod along, but I've been in a lot of vendor, you know, people who are purchasing prefect calls where they'll say, well, can't anyone then just like write code that is gonna run in my infrastructure? And it's like, I mean, kind of, but being open source doesn't mean that we like auto merge every PR that's made. Like we exercise editorial oversight over everything. And so like a prefect staff member is always going to be the one that accepts or declines. And yeah. for, for some reason, I feel like people forget that sometimes like, oh, it's open source. That means anyone can do anything. No, someone's making yeah. decisions still. Plus, I think, I think you could also, I mean, it's kind of a tangent, but I think you can poke holes in the the argument of that security risk because even all of the like many closed source platforms where you're running libraries, those are all often built on open source repositories too. Like think Log4j or whatever else is out there, those have compromises. So like we all need to choose rigor in like in our supply chain and think about how we're solving some of those problems. And like it's not just a I can uniformly trust this binary because it was given to me. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. So a question actually on security, then we, we can wrap up on security. Um, we, we, as we've talked a lot more about security than I thought we would, but uh, the, the, the pocket team had for us, which is why Chris, I'm so glad you're on, uh, was why we decided to focus on SOC 2 at such an early stage. Um, and then, you know, what can maybe other small companies, even like a pocket, uh, learn from us about what is like a pretty arduous process? Oh, okay. I can talk about this for days. So just <laughs> someone cut me off or whatever. Sure. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just remind everyone the short version of the story of how we landed on this kind of self-hosted runner model. Basically, you know, we're planning on building a managed service, unsurprisingly. And um, both Jeremiah and myself, this, like more so Jeremiah, have a big network in finance. So a lot of our early discussions with people and like giving demos was with uh, hedge funds and financial institutions. And uh, one, one person who is very close to Prefect, I won't say names, gave us a challenge very in a very blunt way. He said, I have 
absolutely no interest in learning your tech stack and learning how to run it inside my tech stack. So like basically on-prem doesn't sound interesting to him. He's like, also, there's no way in hell I'm ever going to send you my code or data for a native service, which sounds like you're dead in the water. And so we took it seriously and thought a lot about it and then created this model where like there's, you know, just a lot of on-prem control without really, but in a way that integrates ideally with your existing tech stack, whatever that might may be. So the reason I tell you that whole story is this was very much built for people who are hyper conscious about security stuff. And so the kind of funny part is that we set ourselves up to immediately be engaging with these large enterprises who cared a lot about certifications and making sure that we were security conscious, even though we designed the system to be one in which you should have to care about that strictly less than other tools. And so um, in the early days, I would just li quite literally get on phone calls with CISOs and whoever was you know, making the decision and we would just have like an hour long conversation and I would you know, always got them to a place of confidence. We'd fill out a security review, but of course that's not scalable. And so when we really started to hit up uh, with larger volumes and scaled out the sales team, we realized that if we could just get the SOC 2 certification it would really speed things up. And, and and I mean this in a genuine way, and if this is something I would encourage any small company to do, from day one, think about your security processes. Doesn't matter that they're perfect, but like always track all of your users across all of your tools. Always ask people to at a minimum send an email requesting access or something. Like doing all of that from day one and following, I mean, good software development lifecycle practices, setting up some auto code scanners, we had already done a lot of that just because we knew that our uh, clients cared. SOC 2, I'm not gonna say it was easy, but the pain wasn't revamping how we worked as a company. The pain was just writing and approving these like hundreds of pages of policies. Um, and I and always have to do this. Kingsley Bladder at, at Prefect was the, the architect of all of this. and. Uh, suffered and learned the most through the process. So <laughs> huge the, shout out to Kingsley. The security goat, greatest yeah. of all time, for those <laughs> that don't know. Um, Is there an ongoing cost to being SOC 2 compliant? Does it require you to like have extra review of your code going forward? Yeah, you basically go through an audit every year at this point, and then you update. And like a lot of the things that you agree to with SOC 2, and some of these are flexible, um, are, for example, I have... I think it's every three weeks, a data privacy meeting, a risk committee meeting, um, like, and we have to take notes that we can, you know, give the board access to. And like all of those things are an ongoing cost. And then there's the, and I mean, everyone I would argue should already be doing this, but the yearly pen tests, yearly network tests, et cetera. I mean, you should already be doing it, right? And probably most people are, but you're agreeing to do it. And if you don't, it shows up in a report that you have to send to everyone for the next year. And so. <laughs> Got it. And so anyone, by the way, in, in the chat, anyone watching any, any questions, feel free to, to submit them in the questions tab or in the chat tab. Um, Matthias, I have a question. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Chris. Just, I'm going to put, uh, there is a really, really interesting um, blog post that maybe some of you saw from fly.io about SOC2. I'm just going to go post it in the chat. I highly recommend reading it because I think it's an honest take. It's like, yeah, this, does things, but it's also kind of a little too old school to be all that useful. And um, so anyways. Interesting. Um, so Matthias, I, I see that I've had just, I've had your diagram up from your blog post uh, the entire time um, that you guys are DBT and Snowflake users. How tightly integrated is Prefect with those tools or is DBT sort of like a, a downstream tool that you're using maybe after uh, you're, you're orchestrating maybe like some, some feature pipelines? I think we um, would like to integrate it more closely. Currently, we use DBT Cloud to schedule um, model transformations in Snowflake. So really, like quickly, DBT um, like models the data in our Snowflake data warehouse. Um, and there are various ways to run that. Uh, I think we ideally would like to get to a place where DBT is orchestrated using Prefect as well. So we don't have these two systems that both try to do scheduling and we have to sync those schedules. Yeah, so I was actually, that was gonna be my, my follow-up question, but you kind of hit it, right? Is your, your take on uh, like a, a, a single third-party scheduler versus individual tools all with their own all with their own schedules. It sounds like you wanna get to uh, one ring to rule them all, if you will. Um, but maybe 
you're using DB, DBT schedule today and DBT cloud. Do you have an opinion that's more in the middle or are you really on the, the again, like one, one broad orchestrator? I think one orchestrator definitely makes more sense for our team. But right now we're a little bit in, in the middle where some jobs are still scheduled using DBT. I think it has always, it's going to be an investment to move to one scheduler. Um, I mean, there are many places where we could invest, of course. Um, but uh, yeah, I think it'll it'll definitely like improve usability, make it easier to manage these uh, these two tools. Right now, it requires like some offline coordination between various teams. Um, yeah, to, to run DBT jobs. So I don't I don't want to say too much. Writer, cut cut me off if if necessary. But okay. I think this problem is universal. Even even for people who have chosen Prefect over Airflow, they still have Airflow DAGs that are very high risk. They don't want to change them right now, right? And that's obviously that's what we would encourage. Leave it in Airflow. It's there's no no win to moving uh, working code. Um, but like you said. It requires this huge offline component of like you go over here and then you talk and then you go over here and i think what would be amazing if just some tool would do is not just be the orchestrator and only show you things that it's orchestrating but allow you to at least see and observe all of the other things that are happening in context with your workflows so for example maybe you do continue to use the dbt cloud scheduler for the next year before you think it's worth the migration if you could just see that though, right next to the other jobs that are also pushing things into DBT, I think that would be kind of amazing and reduce the friction of this coordination problem greatly. <laughs> Sounds great to me. <laughs> Watch your space. <laughs> you're, you're, you're on mute, Josh, by the way. You're on mute. I'll add just kind of one caveat. We actually do have two flows right now, which are our first flows where we've integrated scheduling DBT cloud jobs and orchestrating across prefect processes and other processes. So we do have some of this work. Um, it is definitely in our roadmap to start more broad conversations of what does a sole prefect scheduler world, world look like, even if we're also running jobs kind of in prefect cloud as well. Yeah, make, definitely, you know, talk to us as you're doing some of that we might be able to give you some some insight into some things that are coming down the road that you know could help awesome cool okay well if, i mean uh I, generally we hit the, the points that we wanted to hit i think you've given us some great insight as to as to why you chose prefect um, anything else matthias matthias or Jess, on uh, anything prefect related or pocket related i posted your hiring link um, but I'm happy to, to post anything else in the chat or to, to you know, help amplify any message you might have. I think this was great. I don't think I have anything else to add. Matthias? Yeah, I, I loved it as well. Uh, yeah, I've I've loved the Prefect experience. I loved the Prefect community as well. Uh, I had like super, a super great experience on the, uh, the uh, Prefect Slack before we even um, started really using Prefect. So. Um, yeah, it's been an amazing uh, journey. Something that, so we had our first company offsite last week and a big theme that emerged. And I mean, I don't think this is surprising to everyone who's been in our, at least our community is that's a lot of that's true internally as well, right? We like really aggressively help each other when people have questions kind of regardless of anything. And one thing that, that we talked a lot about is like, the more people believe that this is a positive community and a place that you can get help, the more it becomes true because you start to participate in that way. And so uh, I guess that's just to say, while we provided the scaffolding and like tried to set the example and everything, it's like really like the 20,000 other people like yourself, Matthias, that make it actually true. And so, yeah, we appreciate all of you. Awesome. Well, thank you both, Matthias and Jesh. Thank you to the Pocket team. I really appreciate you coming on. Um, and have a great day, everyone. Thanks. Bye. Thanks, right here.